All right, it's Python on hardware time. Woohoo! That's your favorite. Yeah. It All is. right. First up, big news. We are up to nine thousand subscribers on the Python on Microcontroller's newsletter. Yay! 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 It's um, a lot of people. It's a lot of people. And, and the number keeps going up, which is good. More people are subscribing than that's right. unsubscribing. You can and unsubscribe? Yes. Yeah. Yes, you can unsubscribe. Oh. Oh. Anytime you want. Wow. Just at the it's bottom, a, click it's unsubscribe. It's a separate website called adafruitdaily.com. And the reason we did that is we never wanted anyone to accuse us of using their store account for a newsletter account. That's how crazy we are about privacy and, and permissions and all that. So anyone can go there. We don't really market the newsletter. It's like word of mouth and people... Like, oh, I like Python, I like hardware, or they're seeing their projects in there, so we're up to 9,000. This week, in the newsletter, um, Jeff, some of your stuff is in here. So we're up to the CircuitPython 7 release candidate 1. Yeah. You did the QR code stuff mm -hmm. in it. Got a lot of camera stuff camera in there. Camera stuff. That's camera all stuff. Sense 6. Okay. Yeah. So um, Bluetooth, low energy, Scott's doing a bunch of that. The camera support on ESP32 S2. That's you. What is that all about? What um, can you do with it? So uh, you can record JPEG images to an SD card. You can display images from a camera live on an LCD. You can just decode some QR codes. You, if you can figure out other things to do with Microlab to process the images, you okay. can do image effects. We are going to explore that soon, I think. Yeah. I just haven't done a lot of it myself. Yeah, you're, we're on vacation right now, because you're here. Yeah. But when you get I'm back, we, we'll probably uh, get back to it. But it's also not even just ESP32S2. It's also RP2040. Right. And, and I think you did get Sam 51 does work to an extent. It works with one of the two camera models we've been looking at, but yeah. not the other. Okay. And uh, while uh, Jeff was visiting, we bought, uh, we showed this on Desk of Lady Ada. Yeah. Uh, we bought this camera, and I was going to say buy it, and I'm just like, well, I should just give it to you so you can play around with it here. And it's, it's a hardware camera. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have a view screen. It has a four-way switch. It's a circuit board. You can see it. And it has like some neat filtering things and stuff yeah, like that. So we thought- it's got like four filter modes. I took yeah. it to the Met and took pictures in the Met with it. So that was cool. kind of fun. It was, it's That's a cool. different experience to rewind back to when we didn't have a screen on yeah. our camera and you don't check everything. Yeah, you don't have a screen. Right it's like, it, and later on when you look at your computer, it's like the film getting developed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was fun. It was fun to have. And so we're getting ideas on what we want to do for a camera. Cause you worked on the calculator. Mm -hmm. We have a ruler and we have a num number pad, we have keyboard stuff. So maybe the next thing. What, what are other electronic objects we carry with us and yeah. why can't we make them ourselves? Yeah, um, there's a, thinking about like a mouse, you know, there's a lot of things that we want to do that CircuitPython can we power. We could do, you know, we did the mag tab, we could do an e-ink reader. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, there's well, Joey's. Joey did a lot that, of stuff that in yeah, the area. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're, uh, he won the Hackaday contest. We still have to make at least some of those boards. Yeah, we got we got COVIDized. So, <laughs> All right, so that's our, RC1 is out. Please, yeah. please, please test it. Um, a lot of stuff happened in 7. It's actually, like, I think our biggest release. Um, so much stuff went in, which is good. We fixed a lot of bugs. We, you know, uh, caught up to MicroPython, all that extra stuff. Um, we updated, like, GCC. We updated board support, yeah. SDKs. A whole lot went in. Um, new MicroPython release. We are continuing on the great merge. In fact, that's what this poster is, you can see. This is the two snakes together. Um, so that's going on. Uh, play MP3s on Raspberry Pi with Pico with Circuit Python. You worked on MP3. Playback. I worked on some of the code. Ketney did a great guide, yeah. though. So if someone wanted to make a music player with Adafruit hardware and Circuit Python, could they do we, it now? We actually have one in the learning system right. with PyGamer. <laughs> Uh, but now you can do it on RP2040, which we didn't it. think that yeah. you could do. The reason we didn't write this guide before is we thought that um, mm -hmm. we wouldn't have enough processor speed to decode MP3s because it doesn't have a DSP. Right. So we were like, oh, can you really do it without DSP? But um, There are you know, limits. You need a 64 kbit per second or lower MP3 file. Yeah, but, but it still sounds, I mean, For audiobooks okay. or like very simple sound effects, it's a tenth, tenth of the size of a WAV file. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of people do have MP3s, and it works quite well. Um, even with PWM out, I just think it's super cool. You can just play MP3s. I mean, like, just it's just funny how hard that is to do on a microcontroller usually. And this is like literally two commands in the REPL, and it just it plays instantly. Yeah, super rad. Do I I2S or PWM? I, and I do see a lot of people saying, "I wish I could just play MP3s again," because if you just drag and drop an MP3 on your phone. Or try to. You can anymore. Everything's a streaming service. Right. Everything's a subscription thing. Just trying to get an MP3 from one thing to another. If you have uh, young people and you don't want them going through the YouTube algorithm forever, and you know you want to just like play music, so I think that's a pretty big feature. And I think uh, we have a couple products 
that I think would make a neat music player. We'll talk about that later. Um, so I wanted to add a little time because this is usually the segment we um, have a standalone uh, video. And this is kind of a rare and unique opportunity. So I wanted to ask our, our engineers here. So you've been Hello. working on CircuitPython for a while. Lady Ada, you've been doing CircuitPython stuff for a while. Jeff, what are some of the things that you would like to see in CircuitPython? We have a few months of the year, but of course, you know, next year, what are some of the stuff you want to have? Yeah, I, I don't necessarily have a good answer to that okay. because you know you need a project idea and then you go find the project is not feasible and that's when and then you, you make all the code for it. like a camera like a camera yeah. yeah you couldn't write lines of python code to interface with a camera um, a project i have on my mind i did a lot of generative text stuff back in the day and to put that on a standalone display instead of oh, that'd um, be cool. on a computer monitor would be fun yeah uh, so I've got some old code I want to take that's Python 2 code and just see if I can bring it onto CircuitPython. And if not, what do we need? Yeah, um, that's cool. So that's something that's I have That's actually on my a lot of, like, I saw, like, at exit and get past, like, some modules that we added were, were be or, like, oh, we need bytes for hex, whatever. It's like, yeah, it, somebody's like, I have this code things. I'm porting, and it's like, that's not in there. Okay, let's add it. Mm -hmm. All right. You got any other things on your wish that's list? That's all I got off the top of my head. Lady Ada, what do you... What do you want to see in CircuitPython coming up soon? Well, we're actually going to um, delete the whole project and start over with Circuit Pearl, where we port Pearl to microcontrollers. <laughs> oh, no. No, just kidding. Oh. Uh, I know. I like Pearl 4. Um, but I didn't like Pearl 5, so what are you going to do? Oh, you, you started hating Pearl before it was cool to hate Pearl. No, no, I, I hated Pearl exactly when it was cool <laughs> to hate Pearl, which is Pearl 5, because everyone loved Pearl, that it was like you could do anything, and then they're like, we're going to do object-oriented, and people are like, what are you, what are you doing? That's not what I wanted. Um, you know, I wanted, I wanted macaroni and cheese. I don't want this like yeah. fancy meal. Um, I think, uh, I think, uh, circuit Python eight, uh, we're going to support ESP32 S3. So that's coming up. Chips, chips, chips. In fact, we got, um, you know, maybe before we leave, we'll go downstairs. I just go, espresso just sent me the dev board. Oh yeah. So I'm going to give you one. Oh boy. Uh -huh, sucker. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> it's work. It's work. No, but it's, it's fun work. And then, um, you know, we're going to get back to the IMX stuff, which we had to pause because there's a silicon shortage and there's no, there's no IMX chips. And then I want to do a little bit with concurrency. And let's see what we can figure out with async I.O. because we've caught up to MicroPython. We do actually have async I.O. support now. Mm. Um, but I don't know if it works. Nobody does. I'd like to find out. And especially as we're doing more BLE workflow, you know, we might have Wi-Fi over the air workflow. I think having async could be could be useful. I think interrupts maybe, you know, they, they do not mesh with um, CircuitPython at all, but I think um, async could solve a lot of those problems. And if you come from a JavaScript world, you've probably already had to learn async and yeah. kind of internalize that model, which I have not. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. I mean, as, as the thing is, what I think is interesting about CircuitPython is, is we, all, we have a lot of um, trained computer scientists on the core team, which means that we're all like, we don't want threading. Like, it's kind of like a nightmare to us, um, which is why we went so far. Like, we're all kind of like, eh, we don't want to do this. But I think, I think with eight, I think we're kind of getting to the point where we could really start. We've kind of like touched on it and gotten some ideas, but I think we now have enough processor time to okay. really. Okay, so look forward it. to. All right. And if Circuit uh, Pearl isn't your thing, <laughs> uh, Circuit Cobol. Yeah. Yes. There's a whole, there's I a think whole list Circuit of Circuit Pearl could be kind of cool. But you know, we right. have regular expressions in yeah. Python, which is, actually, I think is awesome, by the way. That's yeah, another they're, thing. They're a little limited, but... No, you can do matching and, like, everything. I mean, could, could you have an idea how hard it is to do an Arduino? It's totally mine. Okay. Well, it'll be I cool to look back on this a year from now. Did we do any of those things? Did we get any of those done? That's why this is, uh, it's always good to have guests on the show and talk about stuff. So we'll, we'll, we'll rewind around Circuit next year. Pearl. Circuit yeah. Pearl. Yeah, all right. If anyone can make it happen. Th that's Python on Hardware News. Thanks, everybody.